Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. I am in my new favorite, this beautiful little stunt plane, and we're going to go take a look at the wonderful pyramids of Egypt. I can't wait to fly in more destinations in this game and see all the landmarks, and this is probably one of the most iconic, and I can't wait to zip around each one of the pyramids, and we're going to go uh, see the Sphinx today. And uh, if you don't like those things, well, then you're obviously in denial. Speaking of denial, there it is on the nose, and welcome to Egypt again, everyone, as we will see some beautiful cities, and of course, the wonderful landmarks of the pyramids and the Sphinx. It's going to be beautiful. So, good to see you all back. This is my new favorite aircraft. I will say that, by the way, about every aircraft in this game. For example, flying the 737, that quickly becomes my new favorite. Then over to the 747, that becomes my new favorite. And going through the startup process of each of those planes, hold on a second, I feel like doing a little trick. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa. All right. We're, we're good. We're good. It's, it's, it's cool. All right. So anyway, one thing that I've learned about these flights too, by the way, is that the pyramids actually have like a hitbox around them or an invisible wall. So we can only get so close before clipping them and then falling straight to the ground. So if you're going to try to get real close and get some cool aerial photos very near uh, the pyramids, you might want to go into like uh, non-crash mode or whatever you call it, noob mode, you know, the mode I play in. So, uh, wow, look at how beautiful and lush the Nile is. That is crazy. So the Nile uh, obviously floods every, uh, well, it's supposed to flood almost every year, and you can see how all of that flooding, all that water coming through has made for a very beautiful and lush landscape very close to the Nile. And, of course, that's kind of how it works there in Egypt. And the Nile flows north then uh, towards the ocean, and it just looks gorgeous. Look at how stunning that landscape looks. All of those uh, farming areas, trees, and the city in the background, just absolutely gorgeous. Now, again, my flight, my, my flying and, and uh, piloting the aircraft is not the best, but I think this is one of the best games I think I've ever played. And I really hope you're excited for this, because to be able to fly and do this again with friends is going to be astounding. Everything's better with friends, and I can't wait to do things like uh, land near Victoria Falls in the uh, Icon A5, which is an amphibious aircraft that'll allow you to take off and land in water, or also uh, asphalt or any sort of airfield. So that's going to be just splendid. Oh, let's see. The first pyramid is on our nose right now. And let's see if we can actually get it like right between the support beams of the uh, of the aircraft. And let's see if we can uh, do this here. I'm actually going to take this plane up to San Francisco very soon and uh, try to zip around there as well and go see the San Francisco uh, Golden Gate Bridge. So it's going to be beautiful. I got so many ideas. I'm just so excited, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just very, very excited. Uh, not only for uh, more of my ideas to be shared with you and to do other things that other people thought of and recreated for myself, but also for you guys to get access to this as well. All right, one of the oldest pyramids is ahead of us. It's taken some damage over the uh, you know thousands and thousands of years that it's been up, but it will look beautiful once we get very close to it. You can see a pyramid off to the right, and uh, I can't remember the names of those, but is that the red pyramid maybe? It, it certainly looks more uh, colorful than the uh, one to the left. And there's also step pyramids here, and of course the uh, three pyramids closer to the uh, Sphinx as well. We're, I just can't wait to see all these things. So let's take a look at this one first. We'll zip around it. And look at all the damage to the bottom of the uh, up to the pyramid there. Ooh, getting a little close. Careful there. Right over the top of the pyramid. Looking real cool. Certainly a lot of damage to that one. A lot of little buildings out here, too. I don't know if these are historical buildings that are also being preserved or if they're just newer buildings that are there for visitors. But I would love to go and see each one of the pyramids in Egypt. I, I, I need to put that on my bucket list, is to go see the pyramids of Egypt, go see the Colosseum, all the ancients of the... Uh, the what do they call them? Ancient, the, the wonders of the ancient world? or I forget exactly what they say. I know there's the, uh, the, the seven wonders of the world, but I don't know if that includes some of these. Uh, like, for example, the pyramids. Take a look at that one, though. Beautiful detail. Look at that. Just gorgeous. We're going to cut in real tight here. We're getting a little too close. And now time to pull out and go on to the next one. It really looks good. Wow, you can actually see how they're kind of uneven and starting to sag after, you know many many years of weather and wind and dust and possibly rain and other things they're obviously going to take a little wear and tear and it really looks cool to see how long these buildings have lasted <laughs> it's so cool to see them up close it's so funny that you can you've seen a million images of these in other games and in pictures and in videos and movies 
and then you see it in this game and you're like it's it's almost like a whole new world again all right we're gonna go fly up river now and go take a look at something uh, that I find to be quite interesting check this out it's gonna be quite funny uh, in a minute that is all right here's one of the step pyramids and of course this is a step pyramid because it uh, instead of it being angled they kind of just built it in uh, kind of like in flat sections like that angled as much as they could until the breakthrough technology uh, came available it actually kind of looks like it's hovering above the ground a little bit which it might be or perhaps uh, maybe it's just the shadow I'm, I can't quite tell from here it's so cool to see the damage that they've taken just through wear and tear that's amazing just stunning and look at how far you can see into the horizon on these clear days that is just beautiful absolutely gorgeous all right, so here's what I was mentioning before. I said we we're going to fly upriver. Uh, this is a little bit of an oopsie. I think in the game they've... Uh, <laughs> the river has flooded into the highway. This is a road here, but uh, it's a river now that has made its way all the way through the city. And we can fly along this for quite some time. And I'm assuming what happened here is that the uh, highway is built just a little lower than the uh, actual uh, like land level. And so I think in the game anything bl like below what is considered to be sea level, which might be zero here just because it's so flat. Uh, anything like that is becoming flooded. So I'm sure by release, this is a preview build, keep in mind, so by release, I'm sure small issues like this will be resolved where they just need to change some figures, but it looks hilarious. All right, here we go, the three big boys that I've been wanting to see, and the Sphinx. I'm gonna goof around here a little bit and see what the uh, limitations of the game and the aircraft are. So uh, we'll see exactly if we can zip by the Sphinx here right off the nose. Speaking of the nose, the Sphinx doesn't have one anymore. But let's take a look at it. <laughs> wow, that looks so cool. Alright, we're going to fly around each one of the pyramids now. And we're going to zip back. Look at how big the city is too. It's so cool. All these older buildings. You don't really see any large high-rises or any sort of large commercial buildings. But you can actually see all the buses coming in to take a look at the pyramids. All the buses are actually coming up the road to the visitor center there. And there's also, uh, actually there's smaller pyramids here too and a lot of ancient building preserved too. So there's three big pyramids and then all these other uh, construction sites and possibly like practice sites. I don't, I don't know if they were like practicing building techniques or if they were holding goods there. I know they actually like deployed some tests to see how things would work. I wonder if they preserve those here or if those are probably uh, to house servants or other things. You'll have to let me know. Some of you are experts, I'm sure, in some of these ancient things. So, gosh, look at how beautiful that is. And this is actually how they looked at the top. They were kind of had plaster applied to them or, or some sort of material. Oop. You can see where we got bounced off there by the edge of the pyramid. Oh, and again. Oh, no. Ruining our flight a little bit. Well, luckily, we're in kind of... Uh, noob mode so sorry to destroy your immersion there but it's interesting to see that if you get that close to some of these pyramids the the hitbox is a little off seems to be a little um maybe wide i'll have to get a nice running start here on this one now this kind of reminds me a little bit of pilot wings at this point going around and seeing uh landmarks and such all right there we go we're we're a little good there i also didn't realize that my trim was uh, up on this one my uh, finger slipped a little bit onto a wheel on the edge of my throttle, and so I hadn't realized that it actually uh, upped the trim a little bit. But that's a newbie rookie mistake, and I've learned from it. Look at how gorgeous these pyramids are. Absolutely astonishing to see those up close, and all the detail of the landscape around them really makes them look good, too. You can see all the roads that have been built between them to you know, get people around and to preserve them so people can go around to protect the the landscape and the, and the landmark just gorgeous and look at that city off in the distance baby let's do some more tricks if we can try to do a loop or something <laughs> maybe not all right let's zip by this one and see if we can get real close to a hitbox i hope we don't smash into it oh yep and again we did at first i thought i was just uh stalling out the aircraft by you know flying a little too uh risky but yeah, once it, once it bops you like that, it's really hard to control the aircraft. Luckily, we were able to recover from that one, so... I guess nobody can say they've successfully recovered from hitting an invisible wall before. At least not in real life. 
Look at that beautiful pyramid. Very iconic screenshot there. Look at that. Oh, and also, uh, oops. <laughs> a lot of these buildings are hovering above the ground a little bit. And uh, I believe these landmarks are somewhat handcrafted by the developers. Things like the pyramids and uh, large stadiums and uh, office buildings and such, I think, are a little bit more handcrafted to make sure they're in the in a, in a right spot. For example, not directly over a highway or, you know, incorrectly placed in a, uh, you know, over a body of water or, you know, on another building, that type of thing. In fact, when I went to San Francisco just after this, I've noticed that the uh, Oakland Bridge is actually copy and pasted twice. They have a smaller model of the Oakland Bridge that is over a larger model of the Oakland Bridge. But again, this is a preview version of the game. So some of these hitboxes and things that might not be working correctly will probably be removed soon. And of course, uh, I'm putting the aircraft under a lot of stress because of the uh, trim being up like that. But I'm more curious to kind of look, look at how cool that looks though, doing stunts in front of the uh, pyramids like that. I love this. Now, I uh, certainly don't want to crash like this, so every time that I crash and learn how not to do it, it's a way to learn how to do it correctly. There's no excuse in actual aviation for mistakes because there's so many safety procedures and, and ways to do things correctly, but this is a simulator, and even though it's uh, very realistic, some things are just a little different, so you'll have to bear with it. But again, this is the most breathtaking and incredible game I think I've ever seen. And running two Titan XPs in my computer, I cannot run this game on Ultra without it chugging a little bit. And uh, putting it on high-end, I don't really notice much of a difference between high-end and uh, Ultra when I'm uh, playing it. So putting it down a little bit to get a much better frame rate is incredible. And uh, man, I, you, you can tell I really like these uh, pyramids. I'm buzzing them around them just like a fly. <laughs> Oh man, they are gorgeous. I love the cities off in the distance too. They've wonderfully preserved those in real life, it looks like, if they've recreated it here in the game. And uh, I'm definitely, after this, putting uh, the pyramids on my bucket list as uh, I want to fly to Egypt, go see the pyramids, and then possibly go see some other ancient wonders. I wonder what else there is. I definitely would like to see, uh, you know, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, though that's not the ancient world. There's definitely, uh, you know, I, I would probably put the Colosseum, the pyramids, and uh, anything else I can think of, mostly... I I'm guilty of only knowing a lot of the uh, ancient wonders by uh, experiencing those in games like Age of Empires. And I'll admit it, that's fine. Uh, the Terracotta Army, I'd love to go see that. Absolutely beautiful. All right, let's come in for a landing here and see if we can touch down next to the pyramids. Maybe we'll have lunch or something over here. That'll be cool. I really like this view of the aircraft as well because it kind of lets you see both the aircraft and the landscape in a much bigger picture without getting a little too far away. So this is really good for landings and such. So let's do a little touch down here. And we'll see if we can come in next to the parking lot. Ah, this will be fine right here. Perfect. Oh, wow, okay, the vehicles actually have hit boxes. Okay. That's interesting. And, uh, great. This, this will be fine. So one of the troubles in this game, too, is that if you're in this mode, you, there's not like a reset button, so if you get kind of trapped, you might have to restart your flight, which can be a little annoying. But uh, we should be able to maneuver our way out of this one, and uh, that should make for a little better. But the buses are fully detailed, and so is the truck. There, there's details on the smallest things. They used to kind of mash these down and make them look kind of like trash. They really didn't look good at all, but look, there's hitboxes on the buses and the vehicles, which means that they actually have handcrafted some of these vehicles on the roads. So... Getting so close to these vehicles, you can A, see how small this plane is compared to a bus, and B, you can see all the detail that they put in the vehicles. So that way, when you're flying over a, uh, you know, if you go to New York and you're flying around the Brooklyn Bridge and you're seeing vehicles crossing the bridge, they actually have this level of detail to them. Like, you can actually see the trim on the vehicles, and you can actually see all the lights, and they have good detail to them. Like, these, this is detail of, like, a racing game. For cars, this is a flight simulator. You're supposed to be up in the air. And uh, by the way, this is how this is an example of how you don't play Microsoft Flight Simulator. Just so you know, everything I'm doing here is just to teach you how to be good. Don't be like me. Don't do it. All right, let's take off again. But it's meant to be fun, and it's meant to be a learning experience for a lot of people. And it's really exciting to see people who fly 737s or have flown 747s or private private pilots who have their license to fly other planes like that and to do it so professionally. This game is great. It's a mix of good and, 
and new and old, and it's just wonderful. Speaking of new and old, this plane next to the uh, pyramids is definitely a good example of that. I want to try to come in for a better landing. I'm, tr I'm trying to impress you now at this point. So let's try to do that with another landing here. And, uh, yeah, that every time that button beeps, that means that uh, somebody thinks I'm doing a good job as a pilot. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. That's <laughs> Yeah, that must be what it means. All right, so we've landed on the road now. That's better, right? But unfortunately, there's probably some buses in front of us. Oh, and uh, man, my landing was rougher than the surface of those pyramids. But let's try again to, to get a nice uh, parking job here. And the roundabout isn't finished, and neither is this wall. <laughs> but that's okay. So some things oddly have hitboxes. I, I don't know why they gave the pyramids hitboxes around them. I, I don't understand that. Vehicles and anything on the ground, I, I don't get why there would be a hitbox on some of that stuff because it really doesn't matter. But I don't know. From a design choice, it just seems like either everything should have a hitbox or nothing should. I guess except for the ground. Because, what you know... I guess what it should represent is if you're actually uh, flying in the uh, proper mode with the physics on and, and you hit a vehicle, that's supposed to tell you that you've ended up causing irre irreplaceable or critical damage to the aircraft, and that's when it'll end. And when you crash in this game, it'll just go to a black screen and basically say you've, you've caused critical damage to the aircraft, and uh, that's it. So that might in indicate why there's hitboxes. But some things don't have hitboxes, like these buildings here don't have hitboxes so it's a little inconsistent of what you can run into and what you can't so in other words you could land here in front of the sphinx and not take any damage at all and you'll have a perfect like you even if you're playing in realistic mode you have a perfect flight let's go uh, take off and fly by the sphinx one more time it's really cool to see it up close and you can only get a glimpse of it but it really looks great all right, guys, I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you uh, for forgiving me for my uh, newbiness. I uh, haven't really played much flight simulators on the channel, but big, big fan of them and have played them a lot before I started on YouTube. And it's great to try to, you know, become an actual good pilot now. I've got many friends who, pl who actually have their pilot's license and or parents work for the airlines, and they're very familiar with aircraft and all of the workings of an airport and uh, an airplane. So... Can't wait to show you guys more of what I do. I hope you enjoy my loopy loops and my crazy antics. And I just love this game. It's great. And you can do whatever you want because it's your experience. Guys, thanks for subbing. Thanks for liking the video. And I hope to see you soon for more Microsoft Flight Sim. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you guys. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> I hope to see you again soon.